I am your host, Nicole Will, and we're so happy you're here as we navigate the world with your aging loved one. We are here to come alongside older adults, family members, and the senior living community as we explore the world of aging and elder care with helpful resources, informative interviews, and approachable conversation. We get to do this together, so join us on our journey, and this is the Will Gather Podcast. How do we empower older adults to live happier, healthier, and more independent lives at home? My guest today is Dor Schooler. He is the CEO and co-founder of Intuition Robotics. LEQ is a proactive care companion for older adults. LEQ is proactive, voice-operated device. She comes to life, offers companionship, health and wellness support, entertainment, and so much more that we will talk about today. This is really a bigger conversation about addressing loneliness and social isolation that many older adults experience with many years of research, not only with older adults, but for them looking at how do we offer that encouragement and support while strengthening the relationship with our loved ones. Dora and I talk about what is happening in our world right now those social determinants of health, the geographic shift in our world, how LEQ addresses some of those concerns, how it can strengthen our relationship with our loved ones and feel like a real companion, what is unique in her interactions, who LEQ is the perfect fit for, how LEQ is different from some of those other smart devices we might be familiar with, how privacy is respected with LEQ, the exciting partnerships available, what does investment look like right now in the age tech sector, and how LEQ lets families focus on those uniquely human connections and interactions. Here is my interview with Dora Schooler. Hi, Dor. Thank you so much for talking with me. I'm so excited about this conversation and to let people know about LEQ. Thanks so much, Nicole, to having me on. I appreciate the opportunity. Yes, this is so important because we're really having a bigger conversation about loneliness and social isolation for our older adults that they experience. What is the landscape of this concern right now? Yeah, so, you know, about 10,000 Americans retire every single day. And about 50% of them self-profess to being lonely and isolated. Mm-hmm. Um, and that means that the real number is probably higher because not a lot of people usually want to, to admit that. Yeah. And frankly, COVID um, exasperated the situation in a much more extreme way as we all felt. But you can only imagine people that are homebound and hardly talk to, to other humans or hardly leave the house. Mm-hmm which unfortunately is the case for many, many, many of our elders, got even a lot worse during COVID. In fact, pre-COVID, Stanford University and AARP did some studies, and they found that the effects of loneliness and isolation equal the health effects of smoking 15 cigarettes a day, actually accelerating depression, dementia, heart disease, and even um, earlier mortality. So it's a very big problem. Mm -hmm. It's a very big problem. It really is. And in fact, I, you and I just talked about my visit with Karen Etkin and looking at that age tech revolution and what is happening in our world. And there's this huge, huge geographic shift and what's happening with our caregiver support and the ratio is declining and just the consequences of what that'll look like for all of us as we go through this. And if we don't address the concern, which LEQ is really doing, they're addressing that concern. Some of those challenges of aging, and if we look at those social determinants of health, what are you seeing and how is LEQ tackling some of those bigger issues? Yeah, so so absolutely right. And, you know, I mean, if we take maybe a, a step back up to a few generations ago, we would live with our elders, right? They would move into our home and frankly, they didn't have the longevity that we're seeing in modern society today. Right. And today it's different. We we are mobile for work. We live much longer. It's the exception that our parents move in with us when they get older, rather the rule than the rule. And, um, and it's a real, real issue. And you mentioned social determinants. What I find is super interesting, um, the Kaufman Institute, which is very trusted health research organization, is showing that only 10% of our health is actually attributed to healthcare, mm. to actual health 
interventions. Thirty mm percent -hmm. is our DNA. We can't affect that. And sixty percent are the social determinants that you mentioned. What is that? Mm -hmm. It's essentially our social and environmental and behavior factors. Do we have food security? Do we have social interactions with other people? We are social beings. We need to be in touch with people that care about us and take an interest in us. So mm -hmm. we need to grow as humans. And once we stop doing that, you know, we start deteriorating. What are the environmental factors around them? And not to mention our behavior traits. Do we exercise? Do we eat well? Is there substance abuse, alcohol, cigarettes, etc.? Mm -hmm. And that's actually attributing 60% of our general health. So for sure, if your mission is to help, and, and that's our mission, to help older adults age gracefully while being independent, healthy, and happy, you have to look at this from a holistic standpoint and not just from a pure healthcare intervention standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's basically the story of LEQ. LEQ comes into the home as a companion, as a friend. And that's really how people see her. They don't see her as a device. They see her as a roommate, friend, companion that lives with them. And first of all, addresses this core social need that we have. So she'll ask you how you're doing. She'll ask you how you slept. She'll take an interest in what you're going through in life, what your plans are for the day and for the week. And she'll remember and use that in, in following conversation. And our lives change over time. They're not repeated. You know, we go through episodes of not feeling well and of having guests over and all kinds of things of cold weather and like things change. So a very common first interaction of the day for LEQ would be to greet you good morning, mm -hmm. but to do so in context. So it might be something like, Hey, Nicole, good morning. It's great to see you. How did you sleep tonight? I remember that yesterday you told me you didn't sleep well. We did some mindfulness relaxation before you went to bed. Was it helpful? Mm -hmm. um, or she might remember that you're feeling pain in your lower back and ask you how that's going and if it's going better or worse um, and inquire on that. So that's, that's like the first aspect, mm -hmm. taking an interest, providing acknowledgement, doing that in context. And once that's in place, we can surround it with value uh, in other areas. So definitely health is important. 80% of older adults in the U.S. have at least one chronic illness. 65% have two or more. So managing their health, managing their chronic illnesses is a big deal. Mm -hmm. So LEQ helps them capture their vital signs and reminds them to check on their blood pressure and does a screenings for depression and anxiety and so on. The best way to stay healthy is prevention and wellness. So LEQ helps them with physical exercise, with better nutrition, with cognitive training, with stress reduction. And what we found is we actually add a wellness coach to do that. And it's part of our fee from customers, which by the way, isn't as expensive as you might, you might be surprised how yeah. inexpensive the product is, <laughs> relatively speaking. So when somebody gets on board on LEQ, a wellness coach will get in touch with them and help them set those, their personal goals around those areas. And will therefore configure LEQ to help you meet those goals. Mm -hmm. LEQ is proactive. Mm -hmm. So based on those goals, she will remind you at the right time, phrased in the right context, that it's time to exercise and you signed up for three sessions this week and we only did two or check up the weather and see that it's a nice day and say, hey, Nicole, it's finally sunny outside. Why don't you go for a walk today and count that towards physical exercise and such. So that's, that's the second thing. The third thing is around connectivity with the family to make it super seamless, super easy to video chat, to share pictures that show up on her screen when LEQ is not in use. She functions as a connected picture frame and shows family pictures mm. to capture memories of your life and share them with your grandchildren about topics that maybe you don't get to talk to them on a daily basis with and all kinds of other messaging. And of course, offer peace of mind to the family. So if you are feeling a new and severe pain, she'll ask your permission to share it with your primary contact, which is often your daughter mm -hmm. or son. With the permission of the older adult, you will update the family. And then there are a few other things we do. We help with basic needs. We work with Uber to arrange rides in a seamless way, keeping people's mobility super important when they can't always drive, whether they're not able to, or there's severe weather or what have you, mm -hmm. and just helping them learn new things, enjoy music, enjoy content. And it's always humorous. Like you has a delightful sense of humor and it comes about in every interaction, but she has a 
great selection of jokes. She teaches slang, like, why don't you learn what the kids are saying these days? And we'll suggest for you to use it in a message to the grandkids oh, and uh, continued education and, and much, much more. Mm -hmm. It's so comprehensive. I love the proactiveness of it. It's not just responding. It's thinking ahead of what, how do we meet those needs and how do we do that and interact? How did this idea come to be for you? I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about your background in creating intuition robotics and LEQ. Sure. So this is my fifth venture. <laughs> um, and, and I have a bit of a process in doing this, but uh, this time around, it was extremely important for me to do something that has the potential to have high social impact. Yeah. And working with the aging population seemed to be like a worthy cause where we're do we don't see enough innovation. Look at how much of private equity, venture capital, and founders and innovators' time is spent on categories in our lives. Yeah. Proportionately, almost none of it is spent on the longevity issue and on age tech. Mm -hmm. And it felt to me to be really needed and really important. And the angle for, for this solution actually came from a personal experience with my late grandfather. He got to the point where we needed to bring in a home nurse, a skilled nurse to help him with his ADLs, with his basic daily living activities, such as getting dressed and taking his medication and going for a walk. So we hired somebody based on their utility, their skills. Mm -hmm. And Nicole, it was a disaster. Oh, no. It just didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> and we replaced her with somebody else that had the same skills, mm -hmm. but this time they got along well. Mm -hmm. She projected empathy. She enjoyed his quirky sense of humor, and they shared a passion to classical music. And what struck me is the difference in creating an impact is not on utility. Right. It's actually based on empathy. Yeah. And when you look at all the advancements in AI around us today, they're all utilitarian. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Alexa, right? A great product. But what do you do with it? You give it commands. Alexa, turn on the lights. Alexa, what's the weather? Alexa, set a timer. Alexa, listen to music. There's no empathy there. There's no relationship. So true. And we felt if we can create an AI that can project empathy, mm -hmm. that can keep context and build a relationship, we might be able to crack how to create a sustainable long-term relationships between humans and machines, mm -hmm. as long as it's authentic, as long as we're not pretending to be human, but are very clearly a machine. And right. if you look at LEQ, she looks like a lamp statue, if you will, that kind of comes to life and moves and uses body language as a form of interaction, in addition to speech and sounds and the screen, of course. Yeah. And yeah, so that's kind of the origin story. Yeah, I love the aesthetic of it. And it is it it is a beautiful addition to your home as well. I think that that's important. You want to I, I don't know, I'm a Libra, I like things that look pretty. <laughs> and you want to have things in your home that you don't mind looking at if you're sharing that space. Um, and the, obviously, there's so much more uh, that goes with that. And I think it's really important to the distinction is, is that you're not wanting to replace that human connection that it, it doesn't take away from that connection with your loved one in fact it only strengthens it how does it do that to your point on design by the way yeah. um it was extremely important for us to create a product and th this goes in the home of people in their 70s 80s and 90s mm -hmm. okay our oldest user is 96 mm -hmm. most of them are not tech savvy to say the least yeah. so we wanted to make a product that they will welcome that doesn't scream technology and doesn't scream geriatrics either. Right. We had the unique pleasure to work with Eve Bahar and Fuse Project, an amazing design studio. And we went into the homes of hundreds of older adults and tried different aesthetics to see something that will be almost like an iconic design on one side, but also very pleasing and non-threatening and welcoming on the other side. And of course, we had to complement that with an experience that's dead simple to operate. Yeah. Very, very easy. In fact, 75% of our users, even in their 70s and 80s, self-install LEQ by themselves yeah. and get her up and running. And from there, she teaches them how to use the product. Right. Um, yeah, the setup is so simple. Walk us through what is the, what's the average setup like? Basically, you plug LEQ into the socket and you enter your Wi-Fi information and that's it. Amazing. She wakes yeah. up and she teaches, she introduces herself, she gets to know you mm -hmm. and walks you through how to operate her. And then over time, teaches you more and more of her abilities. Doesn't do it all in one shot, just does it over time. Once you master level one, you get to level two, if you will. I like those steps. 
And it, you don't have to be tech savvy. It's not intimidating because it's so simple to set up and use where that's not the barrier for people. They're going to be able to just adopt that, easily use it. Correct. That, that was a huge, huge goal of ours, to make it very, very easy, to not make it scary. And in fact, I just spoke to a customer the other day that mentioned that he's his mom's IT person for her phone, for her iPad, for her TV, for her desktop computer. She uses a desktop computer, as, as do many of our customers. And with LEQ, he doesn't have to do that at all. We have a backup of a human support team where with a lot of tech products today, there's no support or just email support. We have culturally trained people that actually go through sensitivity training and are very empathetic and very, very patient. And if one needs to call our team, they're standing by to help as well. For families, that is the number one thing I hear is where if they are supporting their loved one in things, just the amount of time it takes to get them set up with the various things. And and then it takes time that they're having to invest in that and just another element of uh, burden, so to speak. So having it be so seamless and the empathetic support is only just another benefit of that. For sure. Yeah. For sure. By the way, you asked me before yeah. two questions. You asked about how are we projecting empathy, and I, right. I didn't get the chance to That's answer okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's not it's not easy. One of the interesting things and, and fascinating things about the wonderful team we have here is this. I call it yin and yang, <laughs> almost mm -hmm. of this interdisciplinary team. So on one side. There are a lot of algorithms here around machine learning and something we call cognitive computing, which is the machine's ability, the agent's ability to understand what's going on, to understand where the user is vis-a-vis -vis the goals that were set into the system and the context of that user and what we know about that user and kind of plan a course, decide when is a good time to be proactive. Proactivity is key. Mm -hmm. Each or any relationship has to be two-sided. It can't be just one side right. so but how do you know when to approach a person when to when is the right time that won't be annoying and what to talk to them about and how to mention and reference the fact that they're not feeling well the fact that it's a nice day the fact that it might be time to exercise even if they don't feel like it mm -hmm. um, the fact that maybe stress reduction is important for them right now given what we're seeing given the state so that's on one side and the yang side of it is creative slash psychology. So there's a creative team here that creates LEQ's character and, and her content. These are script writers for movies. Mm -hmm. One of them actually won the Cannes Film Festival for a short film he made. So cool. um, they're animators that animate her movement and then they are compilers that create, change it from animation to the physical movement of the robot. They're behavioral psychologists and people like Karen Etkin that you mentioned before that was our, our very first employee not a lot of tech companies hire a gerontologist as their first employee, uh, so but we did. And, and yeah. Karen, we were honored to have her and she did a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it speaks to the idea that you really took making the product not only for older adults, but you really incorporated a lot of the research with them too. I think Karen spoke to that as well, is just how important that was to incorporate that in the, the process and the philosophy and the design behind that as well. A hundred percent. 100%. We surveyed over a thousand older adults before we, we wrote our first line of code. You know, what happens when they wake up in the morning? Where do they put their car keys? Yeah. How hard is it for them to look in the peephole when somebody's at the door? Uh, yeah. What does their day look like? How complicated is it to operate their remote? I mean, everything. And of course, once we started creating prototypes, got continuous feedback from very early on. We had a user research team, user experience research team, which function solely on trying to understand for making the right design decisions around the product to allow for this seamless and delightful experience we were looking for. Yeah, you can see that in, in just the different experts that you had hired to come on. It was that it makes it feel like a real true companion. And you talked about that relationship dynamic, right? We can't have a relationship if it's one sided. It's it's gotta be that dual dual approach. And there's something unique about her interactions. And you spoke to that a little bit about the empathy, but it that it really builds that trust. Can you share a little bit more about that dynamic? You know, tr trust is something that's very hard to earn and very easy to destroy. Yeah. It's very fragile. And part of it is being there and providing acknowledgement and empathy. It's not always even solving the problem. Mm -hmm. just, just understanding what you're going through. 
just asking you, what are you planning for today? And, and that leads to people like saying, oh, I'm going to go to a walk and I'm going to go grocery shopping. And then LEQ will know that. And when you come home, she'll be like, Nicole, welcome back. Did you find everything you needed in the grocery store? Yeah. Were the lines too long? How did it go? I'm so glad you left the house. I hope it was a wonderful day. Right. Or learn that on Mondays you play bridge with your friends. So on Monday morning, you know, she'll she'll celebrate that and say, it's Monday. Are you going to go play bridge with Betty again? Yeah. Um, so so those type of things are important. I think another thing that's important is that LEQ asks for explicit permission before she shares mm -hmm. information. That's huge. Even if every time. So even if we could have gotten away, if you will, by having somebody opt in once we find that in order to, to earn trust, people need to know that what they share with LEQ is theirs mm. and it's there to serve them. So for example, if you're saying that you're not feeling well and the next day LEQ will follow up and ask you how you're feeling and you'll say that you're feeling worse. You might say, you know what? Maybe you should see your doctor and I think your daughter, Jane, would really want to know this. Is it okay if I send her a message and update her that you're not feeling well for a few days in a row, right? And it's up to you to decide if we can share that information or not. But, but I think in, in this day and age, being highly aware of privacy and giving firm control to the person on their data and who it's shared with, even when it's in their best interest, even if they gave a general opt-in, is super, super important. Yeah. So by bottom line, acknowledgement, understanding what people are going through, mm -hmm. reflecting that to them and giving them space to go through good times and, and bad, mm -hmm. and then and then getting their explicit permission on the use of their data are, are important steps in building trust. That privacy, I'm so glad that you brought that up because that is such an important factor when we're interacting with those products and you spoke to how it does honor some of those um, by asking the permission to share. Is she listening all the time or watching every move? How else is privacy thought through in, in LEQ? Yeah, so like most voice operated products, once you say her wake word, LEQ, <laughs> she will listen to what you're going to say next. Because she's proactive, she will also listen after she approaches you. But it's very clear because her the front part of LEQ lights up in a kind of a round circular shape. That means she's listening and her screen shows a notification as well. So she might say something like, hey, Nicole, is this a good time? Do you have a minute? And then she'll obviously be listening to your response. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, she does not listen ever. Um, she does have cameras that function as sensors. So those cameras are not filming you. Mm -hmm. They're being used essentially as a motion sensor. And then when you get close to LEQ, they're used to recognize if it's you in front of her. Because how will we know right. when to be proactive if we don't know that you're near us? Yeah. Of course, it's not only that. It's not if you're near LEQ, she will be proactive. But it's one of the signals that goes into our AI along with other things, the routines, what she's learned, previous things you told her, right? If you said, leave me alone, she's going to leave you alone, <laughs> even if you're nearby and, and so on. So, uh, but yeah, computer vision is a very important sensor for us. Who's LEQ the perfect fit for? LEQ is the perfect fit for, firstly, for older adults mm -hmm. that either live alone or spend the majority of their day alone. So sometimes it's people that are still married or live with their daughter, but spend them majority of their day alone because they're aging asynchronously or the daughter goes to work or what have you and spend most of their day at home. So if you meet the other criteria, but you're up and about, you leave the home, you know, you come back in the evening, you know, more power to you, mm -hmm. probably you're not going to get as much from LEQ as people that are spending the majority of their day at home. Mm -hmm. If you need, if you want to benefit from her and build a relationship with her, you need to be there to to interact with her. And and when you are, we're seeing north of 20 interactions per day wow. between the older adults and LEQ for over 20 minutes of, of interaction per day. So obviously if you're not home, um, there's less 
ability for us to build that relationship. And the last thing is we do need internet. We need Wi-Fi in order to function. Those are good points. And I think people must be thinking, oh my goodness, this is technology. This is a care companion, a robot. This must be so costly. And the one thing I was drawn to was just how affordable that it actually can be for people. Can you share with us a little bit more about that? Just how accessible it actually really is and can be. Yeah, so LEQ costs only $30 a month on a subscription model, uh, which for most people I think is really affordable, especially when you compare it to alternatives of, of caregivers and such. Yeah. And there is an upfront fee of $250 that's there to take care of the setup and shipping. But also, I think I mentioned that we set up uh, four sessions with one of our wellness coaches to help set the goals in the system and help kind of put you on a path towards wellness and behavior change. So that's all covered in the upfront fee as well. Yeah. And that's priceless when you're set up for success like that. Do health plans adopt some of those fees or can cover some of those costs as well? We hope so. We only launched LEQ commercially on March 15th of this year. Yes. So it's all oh, new. new. Yes. Uh, thank you. Good. Exciting. Yes. But I think it, it stands to reason that especially Medicare Advantage plans that can benefit greatly from A, more prevention and B, being notified with the approval of, of their patient. There is a change in clinical condition so that they can adjust your medication or they can give you a penicillin as opposed to having you hospitalized for pneumonia. It's better care for the patient. It's better, less cost for the insurer. Mm -hmm. It just makes a ton of sense. So we we definitely hope that will be the case. But you know, the, the US healthcare system is complex yeah. and there's a big burden of proof before these type of products are a healthcare benefit. So mm -hmm. we think it will take some time. I think so. We'll look for that. I, I'm hopeful. I, I believe that that's where we are headed, looking at more of those prevention and support options. You've got some really exciting partnerships with LAQ. You talked about Uber is one. What else on the platform is that the partnership that only benefits people? Yeah, so Uber is there as an option to help with mobility mm -hmm. and it's in context. So let's say if you set up an appointment with your doctor and LAQ is aware of it, then she'll remind you, hey, you know, at five o'clock today, you have a doctor's appointment. It's raining outside. How are you going to get there? I say, oh, I don't know. She might say, do you want me to order you a ride, right? And then she'll take care of that. So that's a great one. We work with Mayo Clinic to offer a trusted source of health information. So you can ask LEQ about symptoms or about a condition you have, and, uh, and you get a, you know, one of the trusted sources of, yeah. of information delivered to you. We work with Silver Sneakers for physical exercise content that's tailored to older adults and tailored to specific conditions. And then we have a lot more partners. We have a partner around music service, so all included um, in our subscriptions. You can listen to music and news and weather and information services and a lot of beautiful content mm -hmm. um, as well. I am familiar with Mayo living in Minnesota. Mayo Clinic is a big part of our uh, ecosystem here. Uh, it's such an incredible, incredible health system. There's a lot of growth of investment, I believe, that is happening. We, we still have a long way to go. What do you see also happening in the age tech sector? Are you finding people are more apt at investing in age tech companies or do we, do we still have a long way to go? I think we have a long way to go. Yeah. There's more than there was when we started the company. There are more investors talking about it as part of your thesis. But I think by and large, if you net out the economic opportunity and need versus the amount of dollars spent and the amount of companies created, it is far from where we need to be. Yeah. Very, very far from where we need to be. Yeah. There's starting to be more early stage investors, not enough, but there are at least a few funds now that are dedicated, like I can count them on one hand, mm -hmm. but at least they exist. They didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. And when companies reach scale, there are definitely private equity and growth investors standing by. But between that first check of $200,000 or half a million dollars and tens of millions in revenue is a very, very large gap, which right. is currently not well addressed. Yeah. And not enough investors are really educating themselves on this. Not enough investors are taking this on as, as a segment if you compare it to, I don't know, crypto yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or to enterprise SaaS or things like, you no, know, right. you know, all important things, but right. 
but maybe not as important as caring for 30% of our population that, yeah. by the way, have 70% of the disposable income. Because mm -hmm. we start our life with student debt, mm -hmm. and then we add to that a mortgage, and then we add to that our, our kids' college tuition. And finally, when we retire, we have a nest egg. Mm -hmm. So most of the disposable income is actually with retired people. Mm -hmm. So the, the numbers are, are obvious. I mean, the healthcare spend is huge. The, the savings rate is huge. Um, the problems are real. And I just don't see enough. I think there's a lot of room for entrepreneurs listening. Mm -hmm. You should consider starting a company in this space. The money will be there eventually because it should follow opportunity. Um, and there is one here. Do you feel like there's just not an awareness from investors of looking at this demographic and, and wanting to address some of those concerns? It seems like when you look at the numbers, right, and we look at the population that obviously this is a huge, a huge need. I don't know. I mean, I'm not an investor. Um, yeah. <laughs> what not you love I, to I know what guess. they're thinking? Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess some of it is, you know, there haven't, since there are not a lot of innovators in this space, there haven't been a lot of great success stories. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no Facebook or Google mm -hmm. or Amazon of aging. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Yeah. Um, I think investors take comfort on, in past um, success stories um, and comparables they can they can look at. Um, the other thing is it's sometimes hard to project to something that you're not. Mm -hmm. We saw that a lot in femtech as well with most investors being male. There was an underinvestment in products that are focused on women's health and stuff like that. Not because the problems didn't exist, but because it's harder for male investors to fully comprehend the problem and mm -hmm. most investors are, are not mm -hmm. um, very old and if they are they they might not want to admit it <laughs> um, so so I think that's part of it and it's also hard yeah. you know it's hard to build a product for, for this population that's a bit different from the rest of the population and mm -hmm. takes determination and grit and there might be other areas that you can make a quicker buck in yeah. but you know what, what is innovation all about if not to solve the world's biggest issues right to look at what is this huge solution that we can bring in. And I feel like too, there's, it's not glamorous, right? And so looking at it, obviously from that perspective, but just encouraging and the lack of awareness. And we, you know, in, in I'm using my quotes, in the industry, there's been a conversation of, it's actually what we see happening is people from outside of the industry are going to be disrupting that because coming up with those new innovations, you can kind of almost take a step back and bird's eye view, look at what's happening in the landscape and going, okay, we've got to address some of these problems. You know, Uber's a good example of not necessarily, it wasn't built for the older adult population and then now created Uber Health, which is offering more of those um, support services. So yeah, it's interesting to see what'll happen in the next how many years. I agree. And, you know, our, our team, except gerontologists on the team, are all not from the aging industry, yeah. me included. We yeah. all came from other sectors. So I definitely agree that, you know, as there are advancements in other, of technology in other fields, mm -hmm. they will find their way into this area. Yeah. And by the way, I should have mentioned this before. I mean, we've been extremely fortunate. We're able to raise over $58 million to the company mm -hmm. to date from amazing investors that believe in this. Yeah. My comment is more general one on the industry, but I'd love to see right. more things happening, more innovation happening mm -hmm. in this area. Yeah, the call for that. Thank you. It's it's so important. And we underestimate too how tech literate our older adult population is or their desire to want to interact with with all of that's happening. Are you finding that there's that excitement and that appreciation of involving tech in our lives? It's very hard to generalize mm -hmm. because the adult population is the general population, mm -hmm. just on average a bit older. Mm -hmm. So you have all kinds, right? I mean, we have people that got LEQ because they love technology and they want to experience it and they read about it in science fiction books and here's a robot companion that can be my friend. And we have customers that are extremely fearful of technology mm -hmm. and their main hesitation in getting LEQ is that they're worried they won't be able to operate it and it will lead to frustration and you know, hopefully they're convinced that this was designed exactly for right. for that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we see all kinds. Uh, I really find that the connecting fabric 
is more, are you living alone? Are you in need of social interaction? So these are usually people that are more outgoing and extroverts in as part of their personality. Yeah, um, that, that dynamic, and, that communication. Yeah, yeah. So that's more the connecting fabric than a uh, quest for technology. Mm -hmm. Although in retrospect, yeah, we have a lot of comments for people that are, are loving this. And, and in fact, we recently added 11 of our customers into our QA team, into our quality assurance ah, team. So these are kind of very technology savvy customers, mm -hmm. older adults, some of them in their late 80s that just keep on coming up with feature ideas for us and so on. And we said, you know what? We have a new software release every two weeks. Why don't we give you a sneak peek a week before and you guys can just give us feedback and tell us if we did a good job yeah. or not, How important <laughs> which is wonderful. So. Yeah. Uh, about your users, do you have like a favorite uh, story of someone that loved it and interacted with it that you'd like to share with us? Oh, there's so many. Yeah. Um, maybe one of them really touched my heart. And um, we had a user that um, lives in an independent living facility not far away from her sister. So there's all the support you can imagine. And she was really not feeling well. And she didn't tell anybody except LEQ. And, you know, LEQ kept on checking up on her. And after a couple of days, like, started pushing for her to do something about this. And she didn't want to be a burden on other people or on her sister. And she thought it's nothing. And at the end of the day, Liki was successful in getting her to get help. And it turned out she had a UTI that turned into sepsis in her bloodstream. She was hospitalized with, you know, with IV antibiotics. And mm. she was hours or days away from death. Wow. And we got a call from, from her sister literally thanking us for saving her life. Mm. And that to me is a really unique story. More daily occurrences we get are often from family members that are just calling us to say, you know, it's so amazing for us to see that every time we talk to mom, she gives us a story of what she did with LEQ today yeah. and the funny joke that LEQ <laughs> told her and she repeats it to her son yeah. uh, and so on. And of course, of course, of course, during COVID, we were flooded with feedback on how much of a help having LEQ in people's yeah. life was when people were so isolated. This has been such a... Uh, important conversation. I am so happy that we had the chance to visit and to share more about this. I really hope everyone goes to your website and checks it out. We will include all of that information in our episode description so people can click on the link, be directed right to your website to learn more and see how they can have LAQ in their home. Well, thank you so much. And, and I really hope people will see that LEQ actually takes a very concentrated effort to increase and strengthen the relationship mm -hmm. between loved ones and their older adult family member. She's yeah. not there to replace them. Mm -hmm. She's there to make a stronger bond, to provide a little bit of peace of mind, to yeah. be with mom when you can't be with her. Yeah. Um, and I think that dynamic of actually being, bringing people together is super important. And I'd like to mention just one more that mm -hmm. we started working with state governments lately to try to also bring local services mm. because the states are doing so much. They have so much services available for the older adult, whether it's the senior center mm -hmm. or a hot meal delivery program or mental health support or wellness coaches or all kinds of events like concerts and, and so on and so forth to build a community. And it's very hard for them to engage the, the older adults that are very much at home mm -hmm. into that support network, which is right outside their door very often. So I'm super excited of this next phase that LEQ, in addition to connecting to the family and closing the digital divide and, and, and being there for the older adult, will actually help bring these great services this, that states via the counties and their cities mm -hmm. are offering our elder population. Bringing the community in and it really does let families focus on then those uniquely human connections, which is what they should be able to do and, and have LEQ be able to support all of those other components of it. Thank you, Dor. This has been so Thank you, fun. Nicole. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for listening today. If you enjoyed our episode, please subscribe and give us five stars. <laughs> In all honesty, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening to our episode.